Welcome to our 21st video with data structures and algorithms. And we're going to talk about uh, decision trees. So we have done uh, a number of sorting algorithms that use uh, comparisons. And we want to find a lower bound, right, for sorting uh, by comparison. And we can do that by creating a decision tree. Um, so a decision tree basically just shows each comparison as a node right, in the algorithm, in the sorting algorithm. And each of the leaf nodes will be some sort of permutation of uh, our input, right, of our uh, elements in our array, for instance, if we're sorting an array. And another quick note to make is that there will be n factorial leaf, uh, leaf nodes, sorry, um, because we will have n factorial uh, permutations. So we're going to use insertion sort uh, as an example. And uh, if you are uh, not comfortable with insertion sort yet, um, check out one of the first videos uh, in this little series uh, where we go over that. So if you have the algorithm out in front of you, it's probably a good idea. And we're going to start checking, um, we're going to start doing comparisons. So let's say we have um, three, right? A1, A2, and A3. Now we're just going to do this not this many uh, in our array here because uh, decision trees can be huge. Okay, so we're going to start here. So insertion sort, right, we want to... We know that uh, this is already sorted by itself, so we're going to begin going through the rest of the array and inserting each one into an already sorted sublist, right? So with the algorithm that we have gone over in this uh, course, um, our comparisons would be something like this. The first comparison would be A1 greater than a2. Right, that's our first comparison. Now, we have a couple of decisions, right? Not really decisions, there's two paths that can take place. This is either true or it's false. So if it's true, and A1 is in fact greater than A2, then we know that we're going to need to uh, swap these two, right? We're going to need to put A2 over here in front and A1 will go here, right? We'll move A1 down and put A1, A2 in here. So the next uh, comparison, right, we've done, we're done with two of them. So now we need to go over here and we need to insert A3 into the sorted sublist. So um, a good idea, actually that might help, is to, I'm just gonna clean this up, is to write uh, kind of temporarily what the array looks like. So 2 and 3 when we start. And up here we know that we needed to switch A2 and A1. Okay, so just for our reference. So now we have this and we need to do a comparison. So our comparison right here would be this. A1 greater than A3. Right? And we have uh, two, sorry, I don't like that circle. Let's do a better one. Well, it's not really any better. Anyways, right? And either that's true or it's false, right? So if it's true, we know that A1 is greater than A3. So we, shift, we would shift that down. So at this point, we would have A2, A3, A1. Okay, not really, this would still be A1, but uh, just a visual thing to keep us, to help us remember which comparison we're on. So the next one, we need to find out about 2, right? So we need to say A2 greater than A3. And either that's yes or that's no. And if that is true, then there's no more comparisons, right? And our final permutation here is a3, A2, A1. So 
So there's that. Actually, I'm going to write this in a different color to make this a little bit more clear. A3, A2, A1. Now, let's go back a step and say that uh, this was not true, right? A2 was not greater than A3. Then we know that we need to insert through A3 right here. So we're good with this right here, right? So we have this and we have A2, A3, and A1. Okay. So if we go back up again, we're doing this comparison here, right? We're seeing if A3 is, uh, or if A1 is greater than A3. Now let's say A1 is not greater than A3, right? And in that case, that means that we have this order, A2, A1, A3. Okay, let's go back up to the top and restart. So let's say that I'm going to erase this and just make it over here so we can have some more space. Let's say that A1 was not greater than A2, right? Then what we would do, right, is we would just insert A2 right there, so right? A2 would just stay. So A1, A2, A3, we still have A1, A2, A3. And so we check the next one. So in this one, we would see if A2 is greater than A3. And I'm going to just try and circle this. OK, there we go. And either that's true, right? Or it's not. OK, so if it is true, then we know that A2 is greater than A3. So what we do is we know that A2 A will be on this side of A3, right? So we have A1, um, A3, A2. And we're going to check if A1 is greater than A3. Circle. And either that's right true or it's false. One of the two. Okay, now if it's true, if A1 is greater than A3, then what do we know, right? We know that A3 um, <coughs> should be down here, right? And we're actually done with that because there's no other comparisons. So we would have this permutation of A3, A1, a2, there we go. Okay, and if we go back up a step, and that wasn't the case, if A1 was not greater than A3, then we have our other permutation right here. So we have A1, A3, A3, A2. And let's go back up two steps, and we can see that a1 is greater than A2, or I'm sorry, A2 was greater than A1, right? Because this was false. And we saw that A3 is also greater than A2, right? So that's also false. So that means that we're already sorted. So our permutation is A1, A2, A3. Now, uh, on a last, on a final note here, these were just for our reference, right, to see where we were. And every algorithm will give you something different. It depends on how the algorithm works. So you've got to have the algorithm out in front of you or know it well enough to go through here, right, to uh, find um, each one of these permutations.